Hey everybody, Teresa Sigman here again for part two of my personal blog of things that I just wanted to share with all of you, my So Like a Pro followers, on things that have been really transformational for me in the last year or two and that I think might help you not just with your dressmaking, but with your dancing and your skating, your performance, and just a lot of different aspects of your life. Now, in the first blog, I talked about just stopping and enjoying the beauty around us and how it helps reset us chemically, helps lower our blood pressure, helps you know helps us reset from a, a negative state of mind of being stressed out to one of more peace. And in today's blog, I want to talk about being mindful or being present, enjoying the now. And Buddhists have, of course, been doing this for thousands of years. And it has, in first world countries, being mindful is kind of a, a key phrase lately. And about a year ago, I ran across a man who introduced me to it. I had never you know, experienced any of that before. And I believe me, I had the voices in my head to prove it. <laughs> so I was at a park just exercising and I frequented the park and he was playing bagpipes and I stopped and listened to him because I really love bagpipes. Now, as it turns out, this man was quite fascinating. He is a bagpipe playing Buddhist Spaniard. And I don't typically like to label someone, but for me, that's all of the roles he played for me in the three times we met. And in those three times, it literally transformed my life. I was um, reading a book once, reading Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and he rolled his eyes at me. This was the first time we had met. I had met him for 60 seconds, and he went, what are you reading? Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Oh, you don't need to read that. You need to read Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, he said. So I'm like, all right, I've never met this man. He tells me to read a specific book, and I do not believe in coincidences, so I'm going to read the book. And I did. A few weeks go by. I, I had gotten the book from the library. I had read it. Turns out I had had another Eckhart Tolle book, um, a, good, a Good Earth, The New Earth, on my shelf and had tried to read it several times and could never make it through it because I was not in the frame to um, to. Get to, to get the information. So after meeting the bagpipe playing Buddhist, Buddhist Spaniard last September, um, I pulled that book off the shelf. I got the power of now from the library and I read it. And then I accidentally ran into him again two weeks later. I heard him playing bagpipes. I pulled over into the parking lot after I'd been running in the park. And he, we literally sat in the parking lot for about an hour and he led me through a mindful meditation on how to be present and how to turn the voices off in my head. Talk about a freaking miracle. <laughs> I mean, because so many, this is one of these first world problems where we have so many things going on in our mind all the time. And, and for a lot of us, we have the entire newscast a whole bunch of newscasters in our head because there's the one newscaster who talks about the past all the time and says, oh, well, we should have done that and we should have done that. And then there's another newscaster that laments what went wrong in the past. Oh, and this was not good and this is a sad memory and this is a bad memory. And then there's another, you know, another newscaster that voice in our head that goes on all the time that says, oh, well, we should, you know, well, if we do this, then this will happen. You know, they're like future tellers. And, um, and a lot of us have so much chatter in our minds, it's, we, we never have a moment of silence. It's almost impossible to turn it off. And as a result, we're tired. <laughs> I mean, because there's so much activity and commotion in our minds that we can't ever truly rest. We wake up tired. We, we feel constantly harassed and stressed and a lot of times unfocused, no matter how many voices we all have in our heads, and some people have a whole lot of them, some people are good at ignoring them, some people are not. Um, I was actually pretty good at ignoring them because I knew they weren't my true voice. I just, it was just crap going on, like, you know, like background traffic noise. And once I really started 
paying attention to being present and to being mindful, I was able to turn those voices down probably 90%. And, you know, they still come up sometimes. And as Eckhart Tolle says, if you're, you know, we all have thoughts and we all have, he calls them thoughts, I call them voices, but they're, it's just a barrage of thoughts that always go around. He says we all have them and we can't make them stop. He says the point is to not let your conscious mind follow those thoughts like a dog chasing a squirrel. Squirrel! <laughs> He says, just don't let that happen. Just ignore it. Just let it float by like a cloud. And that way it doesn't become an obsessive thought. It doesn't become something that you repeat over and over again. You know how when you're really stressed about something or really upset about something, you say the same thing over and over and over, and over again. And it's like you're just telling yourself the same story. Cutting out the chatter in my head and or ignoring it was significant. We all have things that we do that stop us. For some of it, it's dressmaking. When you're making a dress, whether you're gluing on rhinestones or whether you're, you know, hand sewing or whatever the case, you have to focus so much on that project that if you think about it, most of your extraneous thoughts are gone. So like if you, if you become aware, if you become very present in what you're doing, like the dressmaking or gluing on rhinestones or working in the garden, or just watching the sunset go by, because you are so present and so focused on that particular item, whatever that item is, that the nonsense, the crap, the chatter that always goes on in your brain, you know, the rest of the time is silent. And when you become aware of that, it makes such a difference. And when 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 you become aware that it has turned off, that the that the thoughts have turned off then you can start doing it again and again. And so just like anything, awareness is key. With your dancing, with your skating, awareness is the key. You don't know that you're doing a step wrong until someone corrects you and then you can see the contrast. You can see the difference and okay, this works and that doesn't. And then you have a goal to reach for on how to make that step better and better. And it's really the same thing with being present, with being mindful. If you, once you become aware of, okay, I am, I'm really focused here. I'm very present. I'm calm. I feel good. I feel ready to go. And then once you know what that feeling feels like, you can keep implementing it more and more and more until it becomes habit. It's just like learning a, a, a sewing skill or putting fishing line in a hymn or learning your dance or skate routine. When when you know, when you have a starting point, then you can keep building on it and just practicing it until it becomes habit, until it's second nature and you don't have to think about it anymore. So this was perhaps not the most stellar <laughs> talk about being present or mindful, um, but it's my own personal experience. And what a difference it has made. I will be eternally grateful to the bagpipe playing Buddhist Spaniard who introduced me to this concept of being present and being mindful. What a world of difference. Good things happen more often because I'm not always thinking about what could have been or what should have been. I can stay focused on what's now. I can, I can, you know, sometimes my now is looking towards the future. I'm planning, I'm, I'm doing whatever, but my mind is not always going so many different directions. And um, so it's really, it's really pretty neat. Because this was perhaps not the best explanation ever, I have given you some suggested reading materials below and some really awesome TED Talks that I found helpful to get me started. So if you're interested in just trying to take a little key step and implementing that into your life for 2017, I highly recommend it. It's been mighty cool. <laughs> All right, that is it for me. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you for following my So Like a Pro blogs. It is an honor and a pleasure. I love love doing it and I love my students. I love all your emails and the comments you make on the blogs. So yeah, I'm looking forward to an even better 2017. 
Thank you so much.